The story of Hell's Kitchen may be one of the saddest tales the rap game has to offer. It's a story of a kid pouring his heart into his passion, finding his audience, and getting the chance of a lifetime, only to become corrupted by the SoundCloud rapper lifestyle he so desperately wanted to be a part of, and passing away before he truly got a chance to find his voice. The story hits hard for many because it could have been any of us. This wasn't a kid who was deeply entrenched in the LA lifestyle. He was a fan of the wave and the image presented to him, just like any other kid growing up in the 2010s, even becoming part of the very thing he looked up to, only for it to pick him up and spit him out, leaving nothing left of what was. This is the story of Hella Sketchy. Jacob Thurston was born on June 11, 2001 in Los Angeles, California. He stayed in LA until the age of 11 when his family decided to pack up and move to Texas. Growing up, he was always an extremely bright kid, doing very well in school, but for unknown reasons, his parents would take him out of public school, instead deciding to homeschool him throughout middle school. This left Jacob with a lot of free time on his hands, and with very few friends in the local area, he would start to play Minecraft with people online. He loved the game so much that by the age of 10, he actually taught himself how to code in Java, making his own private servers for the game and playing with friends that way as well. It's evident to see that even from a young age he was very skilled and talented with computers, but alongside his love for computers, he also had a love for music. His father would introduce him to Green Day, even taking him to a few live shows. He loved it so much that he actually became inspired to learn how to play guitar at only the age of 9. It seemed like everything was going well for Sketchy. At such a young age, he was so talented with computers and music and it seemed like he was going to have a bright future, but unfortunately being homeschooled was very lonely for him. He did have two younger sisters, but he didn't really have any boys his own age to hang out with and take out his energy on. This would lead Sketchy to develop depression at a very young age. However, just like before, he would find a new outlet to express himself. This is when he would combine his skills with computers as well as his love of music together to start creating beats online. He would pour countless nights working on his craft and perfecting his sound until it was just right. He started off producing lo-fi beats before moving into a different sound. Sketchy had a unique style even from the age of 13 with poppy melodies and video game inspired effects. Some would even consider his beats a prototype for the whole hyperpop slash rage sound that we're hearing a lot in the modern day of rap. And he was doing all of this back in 2014, showing that he was a true pioneer of his genre. Not long after this, the money would start rolling in when he would sell his songs on Bandcamp. At the age of 14, he was already gaining a profit off his passion, before he was old enough to even drive a car at that. Within only six months of producing, Sketchy was already getting big names buying his beats. He was able to connect with a rapper known by Juice the Kid, who used one of his beats on his Twilight Zone EP. Although most people don't know him by the name Juice the Kid, most people just refer to him as Juice World. And yes, at this time, Juice World wasn't yet famous, but that didn't stop sketchy from working with other big names in the underground at the time like Warhol SS, Coldheart, and even Lil Tracy. Sketchy was always a big fan of Peep. Unfortunately for him though, Peep had already passed away before he got a chance to work with him. It seems Sketchy actually idolized Peep in more ways than one because by the age of 16, Sketchy was starting to indulge in drugs. At this point, he had already made $40,000 off of his beats and he would take a little bit of that money and go online to a dark website and buy a little bit of Xanax and Molly. Which he would unfortunately overdose on it in the back of his parents' car after he would mix the two substances together. Just a side note here, I got a little advice for any stupid kids who want to start taking drugs. Don't mix downers and uppers. Not only is it dangerous, but just overall, it won't be a good time for you. Downers make you chill and bring you down. Uppers make you hyperactive and bring you up. If you mix both of them, you're just going to feel completely weird and be stuck somewhere in the middle. Luckily, his parents were there when he OD'd and they were able to safely get him to the hospital where he was then revived. The event would scare sketchy away from drugs for a little bit of time, but unfortunately, it wouldn't last long as in only a few short years, he'd be tempted once again. For now though, things were great for sketchy. He was making tons of money off his beats, working with some of his biggest influences, and even sold a beat to a big name like Tay K. This would make his beats so popular that every upcoming artist wanted to hop on one of them. Being a producer was definitely a dream come true, but the rapper lifestyle was still calling for him, inspiring him to hop on one of his own beats and start releasing songs under his name. One of the first tracks he posted on SoundCloud was Flip Phone Shorty, immediately gaining clout in the underground scene and some fairly good numbers for a brand new rapper. But it was his next song, Spend a Check, when he would finally be able to break into the industry and get him noticed by everyone in his local area, and of course, making him the coolest kid in his high school. At this point, you can see the type of kid that Sketchy was by the music video. Just your average guy, no colorful hair, face tats, or even swears on the track. The video consisted of him and a couple friends messing around in a local playground. He's able to get the video uploaded on Astaria, an underground outlet that promotes upcoming artists not too dissimilar to Elevator. This gained him even more buzz for the track, getting labels to finally take notice of him. He would continue dropping songs on SoundCloud like Racks On Me and Heart Emojis, dropping a music video for the latter track a few months later. After that, he was flown out to LA to sign a record deal with Atlantic. Keep in mind, Hella Sketchy was signed in late 2018, moving to LA around the start of 2019 as soon as he got out of high school. Once he got there, he got right to work connecting with other big artists and producers. One of them was Diablo, a good friend of his. He would also get connected with No Jumper, a big media machine in LA that would push underground rappers to the main screen. Fortunately, he never ended up getting a full interview with Adam22, but he was pictured around the store multiple times and had videos posted on the channel, like Stupid and Kick the Cop. The second one of those songs was about quitting Lean, showing that Sketchy was starting to 
didn't get involved with drugs once again. He was really starting to live the SoundCloud rapper lifestyle around this time, dyeing his hair pink, getting a face tattoo, getting a couple tattoos on his hands, and really starting to indulge in drugs just like everyone else in the area. Over time, his sound would start to change, going from a light poppy feel to a more dark tone where he would start to talk about his drug addiction, people leaving him, and fake friends. He went from spinning bars on spent a check about not taking drugs to talking about overdosing on his track heart emojis. Another quick side note here, it's kind of obvious that the inspiration for Jumix's look came from Hella Sketchy as they both had the one face tattoo and the colored hair in the same type of style and it's kind of funny that Hella Sketchy would actually call him out at one point commenting under a picture of him and Adam22 together saying that he had Hella Sketchy hair. They even have a track together that came out after Sketchy's passing so it's uncertain if the two were friends just taking light jabs at each other if they actually had some kind of beef behind the scenes. Just like back home, Sketchy would stay consistent in the studio, staying up all night recording tracks preparing for his first album, self-titled Hella Sketchy. This release had some decently big names on it from the LA underground like Warhol SS and Rico Nasty, as well as one production feature from his homie Diablo. He followed that release up with a collab EP featuring Cold Heart. Sketchy's output in 2019 was insane because only a few months later he would drop another EP with the rap collective A1, of which he was a founding member of. In each of these new releases, you can start to hear some reoccurring themes of death, drug use, and fake friends. His final EP was called Fading Away, which is really the darkest of all his EPs that he dropped during his life. He would even post a music video for his song Misunderstood, supporting a little peepody, a very dark omen of things to come. Dropping three projects in the course of only six months was no small feat, and it seemed like Sketchy was connecting to the right people and putting the necessary work in to have a long-lasting healthy career. Unfortunately, that couldn't be farther from the truth, because on June 27th of 2019, Sketchy would OD once again. At the time, his parents weren't around to protect him, and unfortunately, it would leave him brain dead. After staying on life support for 13 days, the plug was pulled and he would pass away. This was only six months after Sketchy moved to LA. This would leave his fans to speculate on the reason for his passing. Many would blame his girlfriend for leaving him and many would blame No Jumper for encouraging his drug use. But in my opinion, the real reason that Hella Sketchy passed away at the age of 19 was because he was a young kid with enough money to finance his drug addiction. Most kids will experiment with drugs when they're young, but the lack of money in school keeps them away from completely spiraling out of control. However, if you take a kid like Sketchy who's heavily inspired by the pill-popping ways of SoundCloud rap, give him unlimited funds and put him in an environment where everyone else is just like him, you get a recipe for disaster. Normalizing drug use was the death of many of these young rappers in the SoundCloud wave and it's a true tragedy that it keeps happening over and over again. That's the story of Hella Sketchy. It's heavily unfortunate what happened here and it hits close to home for me as I'm the same age as Sketchy and I've seen many of my own friends go through the similar things to him. Drug abuse is no joke guys and if you're going to do it, try to be responsible and always, always, always make sure to check on the people around you. If you don't fully trust everyone in your circle, then 100% do not take drugs with them. Do not drink with them. Do do not smoke weed with them. Don't let toxic people ruin your life. Remember to always stay safe, guys. So shout out to all the Cupid soldiers in my audience. Shout out to Hella Sketchy. We're gonna switch it up a little bit here, guys. Maybe leave a pink heart emoji in the comments below if you watched all the way through instead of a knife just this one time. Show respect for Sketchy and long live Sketchy. Let's hope that we never forget his music as long as we live. Thanks for watching. Bye.